Like the electronic copic mode ECB, also the cipher block chaining mode is a block cipher mode of operation and as such responsible to help a block cipher like AES to encrypt plain texts longer than the block size, which in the case of AES is 128 bits. As opposed to the insecure ECB mode of operation, the CBC mode now allows for a randomization of the input plaintext, which helps to prevent the security weakness of ECB, which deterministically encrypts each equal 128-bit block of the input plaintext to an equal 128-bit block in the ciphertext. This randomization of the input plaintext is incorporated into the CPC mode of operation by making use of 128 random bits in the form of an initialization vector. This initialization vector is then used to randomize the first 128 bits of the input plaintext, with this randomization then propagating into the encryption of the following 128-bit plaintext blocks, which always make use of the previous now randomized 128-bit cipher blocks. In the following demonstration, you will see how I made use of AES and the CBC mode of operation in Python, and how I demonstrated that the CBC mode of operation now securely managed to encrypt the black and white image of the Mandelbrot fractal, which ECB failed to do. The use of CBC doesn't differ much from the use of ECB, so I allowed myself to take the final demo code of the ECB mode of operation as a starting point for the demonstration of using the CBC mode of operation in Python. Instead of an AES ECB cipher object, I now needed to have an AES CBC cipher object for which I had to import the CPC mode of operation instead of the ECB mode of operation. The CPC mode of operation now additionally requires a 128-bit initialization vector, which I again sampled from the Python OS random library function by sampling 16 bytes, which amounts to 128 bits in total. With this initialization vector, I could then construct the AES CPC cipher by passing it the CPC mode of operation with the initialization vector. Using PyCharm, I renamed the resulting cipher object from AES ECP cipher to AES CPC cipher and only had to make sure that the Mandelbrot image encryption now also creates a new and appropriately named file to then at the very end, demonstrate the CPC mode of operation effect on the encryption and to being able to compare against the effect of the ECP mode of operation. Stepping now through the program with the debugger, it's clear that the ciphertext of the unpadded plaintext is still a random looking string of bytes. Recovering the plaintext still only results in a cut off version of the original plaintext. Then, padding with PKCS7 again added to the plaintext another 14 bytes. The ciphertext of the padded plaintext is now a random looking 48 byte long byte string. Decrypting this ciphertext then led to the plaintext, including the padding. And once the padding was removed, the original plaintext was recovered. The effect of the random 128-bit initialization vector is best demonstrated by again being reminded how the ECB mode of operation preserved a lot of structure in the encryption of the black and white Mandelbrot image due to ECB being fully deterministic in its encryption approach. Encrypting the same black and white Mandelbrot image with CBC then led to the creation of a new file called Mandelbrot AES CBC encrypted, and once having the encryption with the CBC mode of operation side by side with the encryption of the ECB mode of operation, it's clear that this encryption is now a randomized encryption which doesn't conserve structures of the plaintext into the ciphertext and which allows for CBC to indeed be considered a secure block cipher mode of operation.